If you struggle with breathing in Metcons, or you feel panic sensations when you have to hold your breath and unrack a heavy barbell, or you just generally wanna lower your state of anxiety so you can sleep better and recover better, breathing is an important thing for you to understand. In this video, I'm gonna dive deep into how to train your breathing. Let's start with why breathing would be an important focus in your training. Your body needs air and it needs to blow off CO2. You can survive without food, without water for a couple days. I think the longest recorded time anybody's ever spent without breathing was something like 18 minutes, which was a David Blaine video and an awesome TED talk if you wanna watch it, just as a side note. But back to breathing, any single training goal that you want requires you to have a fundamental understanding of how you breathe doing that skill. Whether you wanna get jacked, whether you wanna lean out, whether you wanna perform better in CrossFit, whether you wanna get stronger with a barbell, they all will tie into breathing. Now they'll tie in in a different way and you'll need to be able to understand your breathing in a different way for each one of those training goals. However, it should be a focus of your training. So the three major things that would be my justification for why is that it affects your metabolism. So CO2 and breathing out will help with fat metabolism. Obviously, your metabolism is important in endurance-based activities. So if you're running for a prolonged prolonged period of time, you'll need to be able to produce energy to be able to sustain that activity, which requires breathing. Second would be your nervous system. So in order to recover from training, you basically need to go into a different state of your nervous system as a simple way to put it. So you need to go from a sympathetic state, which is very high stress, I'm in training, I'm amped up, and now when I need to recover, I need to go into a parasympathetic state. Your body can do that through breathing. There's a conscious access point between your diaphragm and your nervous system. So if you go and you do a really hard training session and then you get a meal and you wanna optimize your ability to recover and digest that meal, having an understanding and an intuition with regards to your breathing can bring you into that parasympathetic state and help you recover. So that would help with obviously recovering from strength training sessions, which will allow you to do more of them over time and help you get stronger or more jacked or whatever the actual end outcome goal you have is. And then the last is structural health. Your diaphragm, which is your primary breathing muscle, is also a spinal stabilizer. So if your diaphragm is basically not in shape or it's not able to handle the demands of your day-to-day -day training, then it actually can fatigue your ability to hold your spine up and hold yourself in an appropriate posture. So appropriate breathing therefore will lead to structural health. And structural health and movement is obviously important in any training discipline. So you wanna get better at gymnastics, you wanna get better at just handling more bodybuilding style work, you wanna handle more endurance activities. At some point, you are are going to need a very healthy structure to be able to do that training over and over and over again. So hopefully that justification of why breathing should be a focus of your training is good enough to have you hooked. Now moving on to what is correct breathing. Now this is something that I hear from a lot of different types of experts. You'll have people in the medical community that have differing opinions from people from the yogi or mystical community which will be different than what you'll find in a sport performance community. So when you're going through breathing, you'll see medical people will generally talk about diaphragmatic breathing as being what correct breathing is and making sure that you're only breathing from your belly and you're not having this accessory musculature in your upper body by breathing like that, breathing up through your neck and breathing up through your chest and your traps, that would be bad breathing. You wanna focus it more on your belly and more on your abdomen and softening here so that all of your air is coming in and out at the lower portions of your lungs. Now, if you talk to yogis and mystics, somebody like Wim Hof will talk about being able to do prolonged breathing and then long duration breath holds. Then you might see somebody that's a pranayama yoga teacher that talks about being able to slow your breathing as slow as you can possibly get it over the course of how many breaths per minute you're taking or getting into a specific position and being able to breathe through the discomfort of that position. Then endurance coaches will talk about the speed of respiration. So if you're gonna be able to run for an hour 
continuously and you need to be able to run at a fast pace, you might need to be able to ventilate over 40 times per minute. And that's relatively fast breathing and being able to maintain that for a long period of time is something that needs to adapt itself. I also didn't have in here, this might have been better said as performance coaches because if you're a strength athlete, for example, if you're a power lifter, you need to have an understanding of how to take in a deep breath generally create a Valsalva maneuver where you basically create a lot of intra-abdominal and intra-thoracic pressure so your core is as tight as possible. Step out, do your squat, put the bar back, and then you basically exhale and let the air out. So there's a component of basically breath retention and bracing that goes into correct breathing. So if there are many ways to correctly breathe, I would say that having a focus of trying to breathe correctly is a bad target goal for any individual because goals, the goal that you have with regards to your training and your background and your past dictates what correct breathing is for you. And if you're having an expert's opinion, their bias, their background, their training, and what they think correct breathing might not necessarily correlate directly to you. So I like to tell people to have a focus of self-awareness, that you're cultivating an understanding of what correct breathing is for you, and you're not gonna get that from some external source. Now I'm standing up here giving you information about breathing, it's not necessarily that I'm teaching you about correct breathing. I'm just telling you how important breathing is and then how you can train it. So moving into how you can train that, I tried to simplify this into four major categories. And I think these four major categories tie into the correct breathing strategies that almost all experts that focus on breathing talk about. My first would be breath retention. There are some basic guidelines with regards to holding your breath. Generally, an exhale hold breath hold, so you breathe all your air out and you hold your breath. Some of the standard norms that you'll have is that you should be able to hold between 20 and 40 seconds. Now, obviously, if you're a free, free diver or a swimmer or somebody who specializes in needing to hold your breath, the these numbers might be a lot longer, but for just general health and general performance, those are what standard norms are generally reported as. And then on an inhale breath, so you hold, you breathe all the way in and hold your breath somewhere between a minute and a minute 20. Now this can be important, like I talked about, for back squatting and developing strength or developing gymnastics, where you might have to compress your midline so tight that you can't really get air in and out or the air in and out is such a small segment of your lungs that it's not really a meaningful breath. So breath retention is an important skill and one of the ways that you can train breathing. If you are doing breath retention drills and you're in water, always have a partner because obviously you can you know, have a blackout session and if you're blacked out and you're underwater, you'll drown. So don't do breath retention drills underwater by yourself, always have a partner. Otherwise, if you're just doing it on the floor, it's generally pretty safe to do. Second would be timing. So like I talked about up here, like endurance coaches will talk about being able to speed your breath and yogis will talk about oftentimes being able to slow your breath. I think both of those skills are really important. So if you wanna move fast and you wanna be in a performance-based discipline, fast breathing and the ability to deal with that type of anxious, over breathing or, or hyperventilatory style breathing that will often come in one of those race type settings is important. And then also being able to get out of that state pretty quickly and get into a more recovered state or a relaxed state is just as important. So you can do timing drills with regards to your breath. So you can do seated meditations where you try to slow your breath as slow as you can possibly get it and count your breaths per minute, or you can get breathing devices like a Spiro Tiger and you can practice breathing at a very fast cadence for a period of time to train your ability to control the speed at with which you're respirating. Third would be performance-based training with regards to breathing. So that one's pretty obvious. If you wanna get good at doing long duration runs, you're going to be breathing while you're running, while you're moving, while you're in a performance setting and focusing on, okay, what's the optimal way for me to breathe when I'm doing this? Should I breathe in on every other step and out on every third step? And over time, you develop a rhythm that you're able to maintain while going in that speed. So that would be performance-based training for endurance sports, performance-based training for some 
something like CrossFit might be figuring out when you're doing a thruster, when to inhale and when to exhale when you're doing a specific thruster. And that will be different for every person depending on how fast they move, how good their positions are, how tight their midline is, how mobile their hips are, what their front rack mechanics are like, how much muscle they have. So it's an individual thing that you have to develop for yourself. And then the last would be what I would call awareness training. And that's really just a meditative form of breathing where you're just using it as a way to understand how to breathe through your diaphragm, breathe through your chest, how to relax, how to slow down, how to clear your mind, clear your thoughts, and focus just on your breathing. Those four breathing drills or breathing categories for training breathing, I think, encompass all sorts of good breathing. For more resources on how to breathe, we have a YouTube playlist on how to do each of these individually in different ways. I released a classroom series on breathing that you can check out and a podcast on breathing to dive a little bit deeper into these subjects on the Corpus Animus podcast. Hopefully that helps you out with regards to understanding this very important aspect of training, breathing. <laughs>